Hello and welcome to Big Deal. Now, deals and disruptions were the key highlights of Reliance Industries' 42nd annual general meeting. Mergers and acquisitions and alliances are part of RIL's key strategy for two-pronged strategy, bolster the consumer-facing businesses and also deleveraging the balance sheet of the group. Now, there is a deal manifesting in each of the businesses of the company. In key highlights from the AGM, RIL announced the sale of 20% of its oil to chemicals business to Saudi Aramco for $15 billion of enterprise value. Now, this business will will be carved out as a separate business division. Now, fuel retail tie up with BP to fetch about a billion dollars. In terms of telecom arm um, reliance, uh, GeoInfocom, that will venture into cloud and data centers in an exclusive tie up with Microsoft. Now, after disrupting the telecom market, Geo will take its competitive edge to the fiber space as well with the launch of the on the 5th of September with 4K TV or set top box on offer on certain plans as freebies as well. Now, in content, there is a plan to also provide movies, first day, first show, in the comfort of your living room. While all this is really tying in together, Reliance Industries also plans to get strategic or financial partners in both Geo as well as the retail businesses in the next few quarters. They also announced the listing of these companies in five years. So if I really look at the entire picture, and put together all the pieces of the announcements, it is clearly looking like Reliance Industries will become a hold co with oil and chemical, retail and telecom businesses as separate entities in about five years from now. It's a massive exercise and RIL plans to be a zero net debt company in the next 18 months with some of these deals really manifesting by that time. We'll focus on some of these important announcements in a freewheeling discussion with some of the experts joining me, S.P. Tulsiyan, Rohan Dhamija joining us from the studios and Naveen Mishra of Gartner will be also there on the phone line. Gentlemen, so good to have you on CNBC TV 18. Let's, let me start with uh, Mr. S.P. Tulsiyan. Uh, what do you think about the overall strategy and the way mergers and acquisitions as well as uh, the alliances are really becoming a key part of RIL strategy going forward? So these are the serious statement of intent. Now come on each of these things. You have already alluded that the Aramco, Saudi Aramco is seen coming in in the OTC business taking 20% stake for which the modalities will be worked out for about $15 billion with an EV of $75 billion being taken for that OTC business. Now come on the Reliance Geo. He has again, Mukesh Ambani has again been very categorical in saying that they are only looking for strategic investor. That means Probably the next round of this uh, of the telecom player we have not seen coming in India are from the US geography and I am quite hopeful this time that all the efficient players from the US you know whether you call it AT&T or Verizon or maybe Comcast or maybe the other players will definitely be looking to come into India but now the situation will be whether he'll wait for the for the for the revenue ramp up to happen for a one year or maybe he will allow the third player which is the weak player in the Indian geography allow it to phase out from the from the telecom sector difficult to say but the, the one thing is certain that he is looking for a strategic investor and that too in the in the Reliance Geo which will be seen quite positive by the market because the new player who will be coming in the Geo will be having the muscles of finance as well as technology come on third Reliance Retail he has again been very categorical in saying that they are open with both strategic as well as financial. And if they go with the strategic, we won't be seeing the uh, uh, stake being given off maybe in the single digit or maybe clo closer to about 10% as we have seen having given by the other retailers. He will definitely be looking for 24 to 26% stake, hmm. which will again fetch them fetch, fetch him in very good valuation. Hmm. And fourth pocket is the real estate or maybe the monetization of the investments. And, and maybe the other media kind of things difficult to take a call on that that point at this at, at this stage hmm. but he is clearly defined the intent and each pocket or each vertical can give them a sizable amount of investments coming in into the company we have already seen that happening with the passive infrastructure uh, uh, assets in the reliance geo having uh, hyped off to a inuit for about 1 lakh 25000 crore so these are the clear statement of intent of the asset monetization right. and the debt reduction at the company level. 
Right. So that's the overall picture. Now let's take it one by one to some of the specific announcements that have been made. While Aramco deal has been much spoken about, uh, the the management has told on record that it will take some time. It will be in phases, and the next four months will be utilized by Aramco to really do the due diligence. And only after a definitive agreement really comes into place, and it will also mean that the oil and chemical business will be carved out as a separate division. But apart from that oil and gas space and the refinery space we have big big uh, thrust coming in from the group on the technology side now the microsoft alliance was a big thing that has really come uh, into the into focus let me bring in um, rohan also in this discussion so rohan what do you uh, make of the potential of data centers as well as cloud computing in the country and why do you think reliance industries has ventured into this space and with an alliance with microsoft sure nishad ba uh, thanks so much so just uh, building on what uh, my fellow panelist uh, sp tulsiyan mentioned specifically within the telecom business uh, we've seen that jio has already uh, made a big bang entry into the retail mobile side of the business hmm. the microsoft azure deal now really addresses the enterprise side of the business uh, and and with the geo and microsoft azure coming together it really is a win win for both these partners as well as the end enterprise clients hmm. so let me explain this a little bit and let me take a step back uh, just in terms of uh, the thesis for this uh, partnership uh, uh, the cloud market in india is expected to uh, have explosive growth over the next 5 uh, odd years uh, hmm. it's it's currently about an under 1 billion dollar market across uh, infrastructure as a service and some other uh, segments within cloud hmm. uh, we expect it to grow at about 35 to 40% cagr to uh, become a 5 billion dollar plus market over the next 4 to 5 years hmm. uh, so in that sense a, a high growth segment that jio is going after hmm. and then from a deal uh, uh, tenant perspective uh, for jio uh, this helps it complete its uh, enterprise suite uh, by by adding the uh, services layer that microsoft is or gets in uh, uh, to the table uh, to its infrastructure and connectivity uh, uh, offering from microsoft's perspective it allows its uh, uh, allows microsoft to get exclusive access hmm. to probably the largest and best infrastructure and connectivity provider uh, uh, in the country so a win win in the, in that sense for both partners hmm. uh, from an end customer perspective the fact that uh, this this combined partnership with disrupt prices for cloud and connectivity in a significant way hmm. uh, as we saw from the agm announcements it really is going to be uh, the end enterprise customer that's going to be the biggest winner hmm. uh, touching quickly upon how uh, jio and azure are able to deliver this uh, 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 disruptive pricing within this space hmm. uh, two key tenets uh, that that drive disruptive pricing uh, uh, that jio's announced one jio and microsoft azure together of course have economies of scale that uh, none of the other players have and two they have access to fiber and connectivity in in a way that no other player has so the ability to bundle that at at uh, uh, cost or just above cost uh, uh, really drives the fact that uh, they would be able to offer a much lower pricing than uh, competition navin so in that sense in summary yeah. a win win uh, for hmm. both parties but most importantly the end end price customer all right so rohan says that it will be equally disruptive uh, navin you concur with that uh, will reliance do a geo uh, in this particular space as well with an alliance um, coming in with microsoft uh yes you know as far as the plans appear it looks like it's going to be a disruptive uh, move from reliance to you in the cloud space uh when they announced their partnership with Microsoft and i mean if we look at uh the projections for the future and uh, rohan touched on it uh, from less than 2 billion dollar today we expect it to go around 5 plus billion dollar and when we look into the assumptions behind this projection mm. i must admit that the micro sector the small mm. and actually the low low end of the medium that was something not factored heavily on the cloud uses hmm. now with this as you know microsoft brings the azure and office 365 plus the lines you know integrates their basic connectivity uh, this is going to drive the next wave of cloud adoption in the country hmm. um the ticket size of course is going to be fairly small i mean they talk about you know as less as 
rupees 15,000. So uh, given that, we all know India is a price sensitive market. Clearly, I expect if the execution is done correctly, and there's a big if there though, but if that is done correctly, the whole lower end of the spectrum, hmm. starting from the micro and the small business, they would be driving the next wave of crowd adoption in India. Right. Uh, let me take S.P. Tulsian's view also on that. What do you have to say about this strategy by Reliance Industries? Of course, Geo has formed its base. Do you think that they'll be able to give a stiff competition to Amazon's AWS as well as Google here in India? See, Nisha, what Rohan and Naveen has added. Now, let me add the third point here. You are rightly have touched upon the three players and I would place them as in the same order. Amazon number one, Microsoft number two and Google number three. They've chosen to go with Microsoft. Now, if you, I'm not trying to cast any, any inspirations on any of this uh, integrity and all sort of thing. But if you see the two things, data integrity and privacy now are the key words. And in fact, you don't have the comfort with both the players that is Amazon and Google world over and second point hmm. in respect to the focus of the government you know for storage of the data in the country hmm. I think we're keeping these things in view if you see the Apple advertisement now they are only advertising on the privacy part you know because uh, obviously that's a stricture passed on the competitors right. so they are trying to they, they've chosen the partner of Microsoft I think I by giving this this clear clear thought on this two process of not going with Amazon or maybe with Google and mm. Amazon again seen being the competitor for the Reliance retail yes. their obvious choice is, remains either with Microsoft or, or with Google and obviously Microsoft is seen to be more uh, technically sound and more this one in the cloud and all sort of things so I think that this is a very a, a strategic move apart from the disruptive this one they have chosen the partner uh, partnership with Microsoft on the on many other parameters where they will be scoring over the other two rivals in the clouds that is Amazon and uh, Google. Oh, that's a very, very important point. Uh, it's data localization, which is a hot topic of discussion right now. Naveen, you want to add more on this? Could this be one of the drivers as well? And how will it really impact when it comes to this burning issue? We, we all know there is a work in progress legislation, which is working towards ensuring the fact that you know every organization needs to have a copy of data within the country and that is fueling investment not only by the lines actually you know when they are going to invest into two data centers hmm. we have seen conglomerates like adani as well investing into it here and adani the real estate provider also investing into it so, so clearly the big growth lever from a macro perspective that i see is the fact that there is more and more you know legislative requirement uh, which is going to drive every organization small micro medium large to keep their data within the local country and that is why all the hyperscalers the aws the google the ibm uh, everybody is investing into building a data center locally and that's why i believe reliance took this plunge as well uh, in in a way to partner with microsoft mm. and drive this further Right. So, Naveen, how do you see uh, the adoption of cloud in the country? How fast is it growing and what could be the potential? Uh, so far, we talk about the second wave of cloud adoption, which is predominantly characterized by uh, the large services companies uh, manufacturing some of the banks and financial services. Hmm. And where, you know, actually we see the investment happening is predominantly looking at the office productivity suites, the ERP, some of the business critical workloads, and this is where all the investment is happening. Now, when we look into this, we expect the growth to happen somewhere in the range of uh, 25 to 30 percent every year. So more and more new use cases would be moving to public cloud. Uh, now, if I put things into context from a Reliance and Microsoft partnership perspective, hmm. uh, we always discounted micro segment, the small segment, not actually contributing a lot towards the, the future of cloud because of two reasons. Number one, the price barrier. I mean, it was huge for the bottom of the pyramid, and that's why none of these companies could really uh, invest into the cloud partnership. Right. Number two, the connectivity part. I mean, even if you look at 
the big boys like AWS or Microsoft, they always struggle with delivering the last mile experience mm. with their enterprise customers who might be running multiple services at multiple locations. So uh, the pricing for the bottom of the pyramid as well as the network connectivity where the two key bottlenecks, you mm. know, actually discouraging the cloud adoption in the micro sector, in the small sector. And if you look at the numbers which are available, you know, mm. uh, different sources talk about anywhere from 10 million of these unit companies all the way to 20 or 30 million. So when we put things into perspective, I believe this partnership, which is going to address the connectivity part from mm. the geo element, which is going to address the pricing part, which is 1500 plus, right. I think we would see the micro and the small actually driving the next wave of growth in India, which I would, you know, I would like to call it maybe as a third wave of cloud adoption within India. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Naveen Mishra, for joining us on the phone line. In fact, we'll take a short break on Big Deal at this point. And Rohan and SP Tulsian, stay on with us. We'll discuss more in terms of how this particular transaction fits into the overall strategy for LGO and what are the other deal dynamics in the pipeline for Reliance Industries. Stay tuned to Big Deal. Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing the various deals and disruptions which have been announced by Reliance Industries and it is very active on the deal street. Let's take it straight to SP Tulsian. Help us understand how does the Microsoft Azure deal and the alliance for data centers as well as cloud fits into the overall strategy for Relgio and how will it bolster and play out in the years to come? Nisha, say in fact, the future is now everything revolves around the data and you just cannot be first. Mm. With the, and that was in fact the highlight of the Reliance Geo mm. when they launched. They never spoke of the voice. In fact, their entire uh, strategy was revolving around the data and data is seen to be the new keyword. And as we have discussed in the first session that the things are seen to be, you know, tying up with the best partner in the in the, in the the available space, whether, whether you talk, talk the dark data or the cloud. And I think that wins once with the Microsoft you will be having that strength coming into the company and that will integrate their all the operations whether you talk of the entertainment you talk of the content you talk of mm. the voice you talk of the data you talk of the other other kind of things you know available for 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 for, for expanding or, or or growing in the in the in the reliance eo space mm. so i think that is going to help the country uh, the company in a big way going forward in fact the case in point is the aws if you see the growth uh, just in the indian geography of the aws i'm talking mm. they in fact they are they are their main bread and butter for the for, for their global operations as well mm. So I think that the that the things are seen to be quite good, and in fact, Naveen, you know, a while back mentioned the potential of the, the market size, present market size of one billion, which can grow to five billion dollar in the next five years. But I think much more happening in that account. Mm. I won't be hesitate in taking that estimate to in the next five years at anywhere between eight to nine billion dollars, and right. you know that kind of potential which we have been seeing with a 40% CAGR seen coming in, in that space over the next five years or so. Right. Uh, so, Mr. Tulsian, a lot also depends on the economic scenario. As the companies do well, their investments in technology and tech adoption also is higher. So, yes, uh, those estimates can really vary uh, with the uh, economy as well as how the companies are doing in the long run. So, that's one very important aspect to look at. But, Rohan, coming to you on the entire strategy of uh, G then now a telecom you know data that that kind of a disruption has really taken place the entire sector because of reliance geo has consolidated and we are now at bare minimum when it call uh, the number of players which are available in the telecom space on the other hand there is a fiber launch which is expected very soon and on the other hand they have got content play also which is quite robust they have been acquiring content and they also made a mention of first day first show in terms in terms of uh, the movies, how do you see the whole thing playing out? So, so really, if you look and talk about the home broadband market in India, mm. that has been one of the most underpenetrated markets uh, uh, in India and, and if you compare it to international benchmarks. Mm. So India, as, as percent of households, currently just has about 6.5% uh, home broadband and fixed broadband connectivity, which is lower than countries even like Nepal or Sri Lanka. Mm. Yeah, mm. Uh, and and affordability isn't an issue on the home broadband and fixed broadband side. The, the key issue on the home broadband side has been a supply side constraint. Mm. 
Right. And, and what Geo is really trying to do is to address the supply side constraint at scale uh, and, and in a cost efficient way. So Geo's plans to uh, uh, cover and connect up to 50 to 100 million homes in the next couple of years. Yeah. Uh, 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 compare that to the fact that just about uh, 15 to 18 million homes are connected on fixed broadband currently are, are truly revolutionary. Right. So the same kind of disruption that they did on mobile broadband, uh, price played a very big role here. Price will probably not play that big a role on the fixed broadband side. Mm. But the fact that they are going to roll out that kind of supply and cover those kind of households uh, mm. uh, very shortly is truly going to mean that uh, uh, they are going to do a similar disruption and a similar revolution of the home broadband market. So in, in that sense, uh, uh, very exciting times in, in terms of what they're trying to do with Geo uh, Giga Fiber. And then, of course, quickly on content, uh, we know from international uh, uh, use cases that content is often bundled with both mobile broadband and home broadband and has both direct and indirect monetization uh, uh, benefits for both of these business. So right. that's uh, really what their strategy would be on content. All right. Uh, let's uh, just also ponder over the overall m &A strategy that they have put in place. Uh, so, uh, SP Tulsian, if we really look at their broadband and entire geo strategy that has been based on m &A as well as alliances, because they did Den and Hathaway, they have been buying uh, content. On the other hand, they have been deleveraging and making it an asset light model by two big uh, invits. One already announced with Brookfield to raise about uh, 25000 Odd crore rupees, and the other one is also in the pipeline. In total, they are looking at about 80,000 crore rupees from that. And post that, they are also looking at a strategic or a financial investor. How do you see this entire strategy really playing out? See, Nisha, let me first add on this uh, Rohan's point because if you really see the fixed broadband, that is home brand broadband now being used by about 5 million houses and I think that they must have been looking to the acquisitions they have made in the, in the, in the, in the uh, uh, Hathaway and the kind of the uh, acquisitions, uh, the kind of subscriber base they have, they have the plans of ramping this to about maybe 2 crore, that is about 20 million houses, you know, from 5 million houses now being used for the fixed broadband or maybe called as a home broadband. And coming on the, on your point of this one, once you, because the market was concerned about the stretch balance sheet with a gross debt of closure to about 3 lakh crore mm -hmm. or maybe 2 lakh 85,000 crore with cash equivalent of 1 lakh 35,000 crore. So company was having the net debt of closure to about 1 lakh 55,000 crore. And all this amount is getting wiped off. Probably company will be left with a cash surplus of about 50,000 crore, which will again will be get aggressively used by the by the by the company for ramping up the content. Now take the case of their acquisition of Hathaway. The, the Hathaway was acquired at a very least cost, mainly to have the subscriber base because we all know that MSO and DTH both are becoming the obsolete technology once this fixed broadband kind of things comes into the play, and people will be forced to migrate. The home home users will be forced to migrate to the to the fixed broadband, you know, from from DTH and MSO both. Mm. So I think this is the right strategy. They are creating a war chest not to allay the fears of the market that we are a debt ridden company with such a high debt. So mm. I think that this is exactly working out well. You can't quantify, you can't take a call that what will be the effective subscribers, you know, in the in the fixed broadband space or maybe the home subscriber going forward. But as of now, 5 million can easily get ramped up to about maybe 20 million in the next 18 months or so. All right. So those are the estimates coming in from SP Tulsian. In fact, Rohan, SP Tulsian, thank you so much for joining us with your independent views on the overall strategy by Reliance Industries. In fact, an analyst may actually struggle to keep pace with this particular group from a pure play oil and gas to retail to now a very tech heavy company that this particular company has been projecting going forward as well. And as for me, there are several deals in the pipeline and we'll keep a track on that here right here on big deal as well but a standard disclaimer which before we end the show cnbc tv 18 uh, the channel that you are viewing is owned and operated by reliance with that it's a wrap from me thanks so much for tuning in